<laughs> thanks, Carl. Thanks for the kind introduction. Hello, everybody. I'm really looking forward to talking about influencer marketing today. Uh, as you just heard, I'm a lawyer uh, at the law firm SKW Schwartz. Um, we are a full, law, full service law firm with a specialization in IP, IT, digital business, media and entertainment. Um, I'm located in the Munich office, and of course, I'm very, very sad that Oktoberfest had to get cancelled this year. This is why I decorated my room, so we all have a bit reason feeling. Right, now, influencer marketing. I would like to present some figures at first um, to show how important influencer marketing has already become for brands. Research shows that since 2014, there has been an increase in influencer marketing with a simultaneous decline in print advertising. Here I uh, have a chart. This study says that brands spend more and more money in influencer marketing over the years, and that influencer marketing is, is expected to become a 9.7 billion US industry this year. And brands are set to spend up to 15 billion US dollar on influencer marketing by 2022, which is quite uh, incredible. Um, this is a chart uh, which reflects the situation in Germany. Uh, German consumers were asked, have you ever chosen a brand or bought a product uh, which you have seen before at an influencer? And more than 40% of the population um, of the younger population, I must say, answered with yes. So these figures show how important influencer marketing has become in Germany, even though it is quite a new marketing tool here. Now, in this webinar, I would like to give you some legal advice, um, how, how to do it, uh, how to do influencer marketing without conflicting with the laws. And especially, I take a look on, um, on the labeling requirements we do have. So, um, first of all, what has to be labeled as advertising? The key word is recognizability. Here is an example of a company channel from the drugstore Rossmann. Uh, of course, everybody knows that whatever Rossmann puts on his channel is an advertisement. So, that's uh, pretty easy. You don't have to extra label this as an advertisement. But, what do you do when uh, influencer like Kizu here um, posts the same calendar on her own channel. In this case, um, the courts say that this has to be labeled as an advertisement because uh, consumers um, do not see at first sight, so it's not clearly recognizable that this must be advertisement. So you even, even if she uses hashtag and ad and the brand, etc., she has to label these kind of posts as an ad. All right. So this is like a general rule. Um, so what, what do you do when you know you have to label? How, how do you label correctly in Germany? Here I have an example how you are not supposed to do it. So that was a decision um, about a post from an influencer who uh, promoted a product uh, which, uh, from Maybelline, which was available at Rossmann. And that was a Black Friday um, campaign and at the end you see it says hashtag black friday hashtag ad hashtag eyes etc so the court held well this is not sufficient um the, the hashtag ad really is not clearly visible at first sight so as a rule don't mix your disclosure into a group of hashtags or links what you have to do you have to place the label at the very beginning of your post this is an example Again, how you should not do it. And um, this is Gibi, uh, quite a uh, famous influencer in Germany, on her own channel called Bibi's Beauty Palace. And you may see at the very end of the text, it says Werbung, which is the German word for uh, promotion, but it is at the end. So this is not, uh, this is the way you should not do it. Well, um, then how, what, what kind of words uh, do you use? Um, there, we have decisions where um, brands use the word hashtag ad and hashtag sponsored by Pantene Prof. Pantene is, is a shampoo. And in both cases, uh, the court held that this was, would not be sufficient, even if you place it at the beginning. Because uh, the German court in Berlin uh, said that 
German consumers would not be able to understand what ad means. Um, I'm not sure if this is correct, but it doesn't matter. Uh, you just have to follow the rules. Don't use these words, and but use the German words, which is Werbung for advertisement and Anzeige for promotion. Here you see two pictures. So um, this is a best practice example of Til Schweiger, the famous German um, actor. He promotes his own wine. And as you see at the very beginning, it says Til Schweiger Werbung. And um, so, yeah, that, that's a good example how, how you should do it. Um, um, I would like, at this point, I would like to make clear that this is not only uh, very important, these rules um, for influencers, but also for the brands. Uh, so if a brand works together with an influencer, they, they could be made liable if the influencer uh, label something not correctly. So the brands should really watch out what the influencer is doing or make that, make, yeah, concludes good contracts with the influencer so that at the end uh, they are not liable for whatever uh, the influencer has not done. Right. Um, I would like now uh, to dig in into some case law we have here in Germany. And um, I would like to focus on one special case where we have three uh, decisions now, which are um, somehow contradicting. Um, but these are the cases which are most discussed about right now in the media and in and, 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 and the branch. So these cases are where the influencer buys the product by him or herself. So it's not a gift. Uh, they don't get it for free. They don't get any money from, from the from the brand. Um, the brand has no influence, no editorial control on the posts whatsoever. However, um, influencers do that. They buy something, uh, they show it on their channel, they tag it. That, that's, that's the thing what they do. They tag, they tag the brand. So when you click on the tag, you get redirected to the channel of the brand. And um, here we have one decision from the Higher Regional Court in Karlsruhe, which was about a post from the famous influencer Pamela Reif. Um, she has around 6.4 million followers, so, so she's quite big. And um, uh, she did exactly what I just explained. She, she bought pro products and tagged them and showed them to, their, to her followers. And, but she did not label this as an advertisement because there is no advertisement contract. However, the court held that this needs to be labeled as an ad. And um, they made clear that they see that the consumers um, yeah, know that, that Pamela, whatever she posts, she does it to make her own channel more interesting. So that they know, the court said, the judge said, yeah, he sees that. But... Um, what maybe the consumers would not see, and that this is what the judge here um, yeah, says that Pamela is doing, she also promotes the brands. So somehow she does that. So um, there, there would be um, the problem. And this is why this has to be uh, labeled as an ad. The followers would still believe that Pamela is authentic and one of them up to a certain point. Yeah, that's why. Well, I cannot follow this argumentation because that would mean that uh, famous influencers are just not able to promote, or not to promote, they don't promote, they, they're not able to show anything anymore, even though they have just bought it as a private person. So, um, yeah, I, I cannot follow this uh, very, very strict approach. Now, here is another decision, and they just took the opposite um the opposite direction. That was a post from Kati Hummels. She's also quite famous and the wife of a famous football player, Mats Hummels. She has around 500,000 followers on Instagram. And on her post, um, here is, I brought you the post she, uh, the, the verdict is about. There, there were more, but this is one of them. And you see she wears clothes. She tags them uh, with the brands like Zara, Gucci and uh, Valentino. But she did not label this as an advertisement. Now, the Higher Regional Court in Munich held that she doesn't have to. She doesn't have to label it. So it's just what, just the opposite of what Karlsruhe said. And why, why did the court held that? They, the, the judge said that 
whatever she does is not even a commercial practice. It does not constitute a commercial practice, which means the law against unfair competition does not even apply. Um, yeah, and even, even though the, the judges made clear, they know Kati Hummels just wants to make her channel more interesting and everything, but this alone would not be sufficient uh, to say that she promotes the goods of those brands. Yeah, so we have two contradicting decisions here. Um, in the end, I agree with the result. So I also think that these kind of posts shouldn't be labeled as ads because they are they are just aren't ads. But I don't really follow the argumentation, the reasons of the court, because in consequence, that would mean the more famous you are, the less you have to label. And if you are not such a famous blogger, um, then the law is much more strict on you. So I'm I'm not really convinced. And now I give you the last example to make it really confusing for everybody. Uh, this is Vreni Frost, and she lab, uh, she um, had these two posts on her Instagram channel, both again not labeled as an advertisement. And uh, on the left side, she ha holds these balloons, and uh, you don't see that there were two tags. Um, Somehow, somewhere in the picture, one uh, directed to shampoos and the other one to uh, some something for hairdressers, some uh, workshops or something. However, the the picture and the text they did not relate to these um, to these brands. Uh, in, so in this case, the court said, well, there is no connection whatsoever, so this must be labeled as advertisement. And on the right side. You see Vreni lying on her bed and she's wearing a banana's shirt. I don't know if you can read it, but the text states, totally bananas after a jet set, I urgently, urgently need a bed set in a few days of rest. So she refers to her shirt and for the court, that was sufficient to state that there is editorial content in this text. Um, yeah, the editorial message would be that now the consumers know where to buy these uh, products. All right. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the court differentiated here, but it's really difficult now. And I don't know if these give good guidance for influencers and brands. I'm not sure if we all now know better when to put the label ad on a post and when not to. So... Yeah, let's see. However, all these three decisions are now pending at uh, the Supreme Court in Germany. And we just have to wait and see and hope um, yeah, for a clear decision uh, in the last instance, which all gives us guidance. Until then, I just have to advise everybody to, yeah, to follow the very, very strict rules we have right now in Germany and better label something uh, as an advertisement and be on the safe side. All right, so thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, please. Yeah, thanks a lot, Margaret, for this great and very hands-on insight about um, uh, this interesting German law situation. Um, so yeah, community, if you have, we have still some time for questions, so take your chance. Otherwise, I will take the opportunity because I already have a question. Ah, okay, yeah, we have, we have, many questions. So the first one is, um, what are the consequences of not labeling? Fines? Banned from the platform? Ask Mikailo. Right. Um, yeah, it, it really depends which law is applicable. But what we see right now, so the decisions I was talking about, that was all on Instagram. It was, we don't talk about videos, um, but only posts because that would be a different law. And um, so there was a, a com consumer protection agency who files all these claims. Um, so that that could that's the risk. So you get sued by these um, associations uh, for cease and desist. Or at first they send you a cease and desist letter. If you don't comply, then they will sue you. Usually in, in interim injunction proceedings. If you lose at the end, you have to take you have to bear the costs. For the the association is mainly. That's only 200 euros because they don't, yeah, they, they more or less do it themselves. But you have to take the fees of your own attorney and you have to bear the fees of the court if, if you lose. 
Um, and in the end, either you signed a cease and desist letter and there you have a penalty. So each time you infringe the cease and desist letter, you have to pay the penalty or you have a negative court decision, which also has punishment in there. So you really, yeah, that's the risk you have. Um, when we are talking about videos on YouTube, let's say, then the state media authority, the Landesmedienanstalten, they, they also can get active. And they actually, by law, it sounds really um, high. They, the fee can go up until uh, 500,000 euros. But we have never seen that. Um, the only case I know was against the YouTuber Flying Uwe. And he just was... That's like three years ago, and he he was just not uh, he didn't comply. The, the media state and media authorities to, uh, told him just put Dauer Werbesendung like a continue, continuous advertisement on your on your video, and he he said no, I'm not going to do that. And then he had to pay ten thousand five hundred euros. Oh, he, he put the sign on it, and and the media state authorities withdrew it. So in the end, he didn't pay, have to pay anything. So. Actually, the risks are not so bad, and um, I mean, like the question: Can the then can the channel, uh, the platform ban you? I haven't seen that yet. Of course, every platform do what they like. <laughs> uh, we all know that uh, it's it's their playground, and they say how the rules go. So, but I haven't seen that yet. So it's more you get you get a cease and desist letter. Yeah, I think the platforms have uh, another interest in still having this content because, you know, it's, they also make money with that. So I'm not, I'm not sure if they really want to ban such things like advertisement. So, yeah, I also see, don't see the point that they will um, ban you. But very interesting that you can really get fined for that in a quite big amount. Um, right, yeah. yeah, yes. Yeah. And the media authorities, they really, um, more and more, they take this responsibility and um, but that just started two years ago. They they now issued their second uh, Q and A guide, which is really helpful for influencers. They state what they think you should, how you should label, what is correct, what is not. We don't see the judges really um, look at that. They make their own minds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was also wondering how, who controls that. I mean, is the prosecutor scanning Kathy Hummel's Instagram account and thinking, oh? That could be an ad that's not good in suing her. So it's very nice that you said that there are these uh, institutions that uh, try to do it. Consumers cannot sue anybody. That's not possible. Yeah. So it has to be another brand who is, who is a conflict there, like another fashion brand, whatever. We haven't seen that yet. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think now they are all just, it's more Wild West and they don't uh, want to sue each other. But it's these uh, consumers association, they now do that. Okay, yeah, I understand. We have two questions uh, from the community. We have one of Sarah. She's asking, any basic advice for startups who would like to start working with influencers? Where to start? What to do to ensure it is 100% safe? Right. Yes, um, of course, it's, it's uh, yeah, I would always recommend to work with influencers uh, if it works for the brand. Um, you do you do need a contract with the influencer, which not it's not only uh, rules about labeling requirements, but also how often and when, what time and how do you promote my my goods, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, what happens to the copyright of of your work of the video that the the brand should of course, rule that everything owns by them. <laughs> and um, uh, when we talk about labeling requirements, I always recommend that the brand puts in that the influencer uh, undertakes to follow the, uh, the the law, like that simple, because what we don't have an influencer marketing law. So how you label it is actually the judge who decides and every judge as we just saw does it differently so i think for the brand you're in the same it's the best when you say well just follow the law if the influencer then gets in conflict uh yeah the brand can always say well this was your fault but just to make that sure even if you have such a contract uh the brand can still get sued as i told in my webinar they always can get sued but it, internally they can, can get get back the money they spend from the influencer then 
So if I um, have a corporation for influencer who is, I don't know, from a beer company and I say, okay, you're only allowed to publish this between 12 and 3 o'clock, we have this contract, but he does it on another time and doesn't show it as a, as a commercial, I as a beer company can still be sued? Yeah, it's your products, right? They, they promoted your products. Then you can be sued, right? Okay. okay. Influencer does, a, does something wrong. Okay, so what's your influences then? Right. Okay, maybe one last question. Um, what was the difference between uh, Werbung and Anzeige again? Nothing. Uh, commercial and I don't know what's Anzeige. No, no nothing. That, these are more or less two words for the same thing. Okay, okay. Those are fine. In the community. Mm. Um, okay, so we are actually already one minute after the time Hi. so i would say Margaret, thanks a lot for your really nice master class and your insight i didn't know that it's so difficult to work with influencers and okay not difficult but you really have to watch out so thanks a lot have a lot of time with the networking week and thanks thank you Bye bye. bye.